Welcome back. Um, as you can see, mirrors are in, housing's built, base is built, um, the rent looks quite good. It, um, it's a bit of a weapon. As you can see, there's a 16 inch dob over there, 10 inch dob, and a 6 that you might not even be able to see over the back there, and it's uh, a pretty formidable, like a 16 inch dob is a decent size piece of gear, but uh, this is just next level. It's, um, it's definitely something that uh, you won't just be dragging out and, and plopping down out on the, um, the grass to show the kids a uh, couple of things, but that's what the other ones are for. So um, the main concern with me building it, had to build it nice and slow and just take my time. I wanted to make sure everything was right. You don't want to get it outside and then there's, there's problems. You don't want to be troubleshooting outside. So, and for that reason too, it's probably not going to see um, outside for another four or five days. We've got work this week, but we'll put it together. The one thing I'm very happy with, this is my pretty much, uh, my 16, that's my most used image train. And that's a two and a half Celestron um, the zoo and any camera that goes in there and this sort of gives me around seven thousand seven and a half thousand fo uh, millimeters of focal length and it and the right pixel size of uh, the bright pixel pixel scale of um, 0.1 arc second per pixel um, putting it on this um, is going to be uh, just a starter just so we can get our feet wet and then something that's probably going to come along is probably going to need something to the tune of maybe a 4X. Uh, might have to get a Telvia PowerMate or something like that, a 4X PowerMate to sort of bring it up. So its correct image scale is going to be over 10,000 millimeter focal length. So you're going to be in there nice and deep. You're going to need nice skies um, to do that. But shooting with that in there just to get started, still going to produce reasonably nice images and uh, we'll just have to get our feet wet like that. Um, another thing is balance. Got to make sure that the scope is well balanced. And as you can see, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty spot on. So I thought I might have to add a bit of weight here and there or anything like that, but I mean, I've even had this grenade in there and it's spot on, so. That's a, uh, a real plus so far. Um, well, I suppose let's have a look at the mirror. So I'm about um, 5 foot 10, 5 foot 11, and it looks like it's going to be like a one step type of scope at Zenith. Might be a touch of tippy toes or something like that. But um, when it's down around 60 degrees, uh, it's no problem for me to, to um, observe flat footed. So. I've got this on there for the first time. Um, I'm probably just going to use it in manual mode. I won't set it up for automatic, but I've got the hand controller there as well. Um, illuminated um, 7x50 um, finder scope, right way up. Telrad. Telrad is um, the, my go-to, really. That's, that's where I, I get it set and, and most of my uh, moving planets and and um, all that type of stuff when I change subjects. It's the, um, the thing that I go to the most. As you can see, the mirrors are waffer. Absolutely massive. Um, I will have to balance and have a look. We've got down here, we've got it. This is a clutch. So as you can see, the um, the scope sits on those geared shafts and that's a clutch and you just tighten it up when you want to um, kick in the motors. So um, these boys, they uh, look a little bit smaller. So again, just have one last look.
Okay, so we'll probably try for first light on maybe Saturday or something like that. Um, I haven't put the electrics on it. I won't have time today to do that. But um, as you can see, we're making progress. So um, I'll keep everyone updated and hopefully see you soon. Bye for now.